Good evening and welcome back to Timberwolves Stadium. I'm Lindy Peters from MendocinoTV.com. It's a beautiful night for football. Might get a little chilly here as the night progresses, but no wind. The field is in excellent shape. We've had little or no moisture this week. Only moisture here along the Mendocino coast has been from your coastal fog, not any precipitation. So the field is in good shape. I was down there before the game walking the field and uh, certainly does not look very slippery. Don't see any big patches of mud. And uh, the captains now, you can see, are going out to uh, partake in the coin toss. As I mentioned as we started this uh, broadcast here tonight, this is a huge game, actually, for both teams. One of the common opponents they have is Kelseyville. Neither of these teams were able to score a touchdown against Kelseyville. Kelseyville beat Middletown 28 to nothing. And, of course, Fort Bragg lost to Kelseyville 16 to nothing. But keep in mind, Fort Bragg and Kelseyville, that score was 0-0 uh, zero, zero going into the fourth quarter. And the second Kelseyville touchdown was kind of, kind of a fluke. It was a fumble that sort of uh, kept going backwards. It was kicked and uh, bounced and pushed all the way down from about the 30-yard line down to the 2. And then from there, uh, they were able to push it on in rather easily for their second score within just a couple minutes of their first touchdown. So that's how they lost to Kelseyville. And that uh, loss, along with a loss to Cloverdale, the only two league losses for the Timberwolves, they beat Lower Lake, they beat Clear Lake, and, of course, they beat St. Helena at St. Helena last Friday night. So Fort Bragg has won the toss. They have elected to receive the uh, kickoff. And Fort Bragg, both these teams with purple being their primary color, but Middletown on the road wearing white tonight with their gold helmets. Coach Fortner, one of the outstanding coaches in NCL1, football he's been there a long time always brings a great program good sportsmanship from his uh, team and uh, just a very positive guy all the way around uh, we're lucky to have him as a coach here in northwestern california and in the ncl1 league and then of course you got roy perkins and i'll have more about him in a moment but it's time now for our national anthem the uh, choir just uh, got obscured by everyone standing up but that's okay uh, let's get set now you'll be able to hear them as we here our national anthem. Another outstanding job by the Fort Bragg Choir of our National Anthem. A unique perspective hearing the National Anthem from where we are. Live, you can actually hear the choir on the track as they sing back towards the stand. You can hear their voices echoing off the school and the gym back behind us just a fraction of a second later and then out of the loudspeaker. And the, uh, the, the effect is just a, a very... Uh, moving experience it just sounds fantastic so congratulations to uh, whoever is directing the Fort Bragg High School Choir this year they are doing an outstanding job now back to coach Roy Perkins he of course has been a long time coach here as well coached the JV team back in the 80s used to have some uh, just completely dominating junior varsity teams back in that decade you might recall here at Fort Bragg and uh, then came back over here after leaving the area for several years over at Arbuckle High School, he came back and has had a great program ever since. And this year, kind of a down year, I would say, for both these programs. And 
not that they're bad teams by any stretch of the imagination. They're both great teams, but it just gives you an idea of the solidity of both these programs over the years. They've always had two of the best teams in the league, Middletown and Fort Bragg, and here they are again tonight. Here's the kickoff now by Middletown. Jorge Fonseca kicks it off. It's taken on the far side at the 25 up to the 34-yard line goes Justin Myrtle. He is brought down there by Logan Takla, and we're underway. The Timberwolves will have it first and 10, the ball at their own 34-yard line. The Timberwolves, over the last, oh, I'd say, year and a half now, have moved away from that spread passing offense that was so familiar for the last, well, five to seven seasons uh, to more of the running game. And we've seen the running game pretty much since the second game of the season here by this team. And they've been running the football ever since with some success. And they start off with a run here. Pitch it back to William Robertson. Gets a block, cuts up a lane, got some good yardage up across the 45. Well, close to the 45, right at the 45. It'll be, I think, a first down. They'll move the chains. 11-yard pickup from William Robertson, first down. That ball, uh, that, that play designed to come outside, but it, as it was stretched out, the man for uh, Middletown had good outside containment, so William had to cut it back up field and got a nice run there for a first down. Ball on the near hash mark, right at the 45-yard line, first down, Timberwolves. Backs in the I formation behind Julian Clavell at quarterback. William Robertson in the I back behind Ponce at fullback. Out of the power eye, pitch to William Robertson coming the other way. And again, he cuts up the seam and gets some good positive yardage before he's hit right at about midfield. Picked up about four, call it second down and six. Middletown runs a very similar offense as the first two plays from the Timberwolves here tonight. When Middletown gets the football, you'll see the Mustangs also run that power eye. They try and work on the edge. They'll uh, get a formation strong to one side with the wing and try and uh, get that containment push to the inside and down block and then uh, run to the outside. But uh, Fort Bragg has run two similar type of plays here to open this game with some positive yards each time. Again, they line up in that power eye. Strong formation to the right. And they'll bring it this way. Pitch it back to William Robertson again. Got Ponce out in front. Cuts it inside. It's got another first down up in Middletown territory to the 41-yard line. Nice move again. The Timberwolves just running it outside. Again, you get a tight end and a wing on one side. You block down. You lead with the fullback, and you've got some blockers that uh, can get the job done, and you usually get some positive yardage. And the Timberwolves have been doing it there three straight plays. Again, out of that I formation. Quivell takes a snap, gives it to Robertson, this time off tackle, and he'll get probably about four yards up to about the 36-yard line. Just underway, first quarter, no score. Lindy Peters from MendocinoTV.com. We want to thank the folks that make it possible to bring you this game, including North Coast Brewing Company, the Mendocino Cookie Company, Zappa's Coffee, Dunlap Roofing, Ryan Perkins, Attorney at Law, Fort Bragg Transmission and Auto Repair, Sport, Chrysler, Jeep Dodge, and Round Man Smokehouse and Butcher Shop. Our thanks to our local sponsors that make it possible to bring you this local community event. Second down and five for the Timberwolves. First possession of the game. They'll have it Middletown territory out of the shotgun for the first time now. Quibell will take the snap. And he'll give it to Robertson on the option. Robertson trying to sweep around the left side. And he's going to get close to a first down up to near the 30-yard line, which is where he had to get. I think it's going to be third down and short here, depending on the spot. It is going to be third down and about a yard. The Timberwolves just shy of the 31-yard line. 8.53 to go, first quarter, no score, as Fort Bragg won the toss, took the opening kickoff, and have been moving the ball. A timeout for some reason here, an official timeout. Looking over towards the sideline for a moment. Now they're saying go ahead and go. Timberwolves break the huddle and come up to the line. Again, right over center, Clavel with his backs in the eye formation. Clavel keeps it himself. Right up the middle he goes. He's got a first down inside the 30, down to about the 29-yard line. 
Fort Bragg marching with the football. Ball pretty much right at the middle part of the field now. At the Middletown 30-yard line as the Timberwolves have it first and 10. This time, Kurt Ice splits way out to the left. Backs are split behind Clavel. Clavel gives to the second man. Ponce coming through over the right side on a little crossbuck play out of the backfield. Ponce has stopped. They don't bring him down, but his initial progress has stopped at about the 26-yard line. So he did pick up some yards before he was stopped. About another four-yard gain. Call it second down and six. I'm Lindy Peters from MendocinoTV.com. Thanks for joining us here this evening. Beautiful night for football. And nice crowd on hand from Middletown. Long road trip over here. Second down and five for the Timberwolves. Clavel right over center again. Gives it to Robertson. Robertson cuts it inside. And it's got uh, close to a first down. Right at about the 20-yard line. We'll see where they spot it. I think it's going to be third and short again. So Fort Bragg just methodically keeping the ball on the ground and moving that football. And a timeout, as you can hear Coach Fortner across the way calling a timeout as he brings his defense over to talk about things on this third down and short. We'll take a timeout here. The two teams here tonight, about three years ago, I think it was, that we were at Middletown for MendocinoTV.com not too long after the devastating fire that went through that area. The fire destroyed many structures, destroyed many lives, was fatal in some cases. And uh, we happened to get over there for the first game back at Middletown High School after that fire. The community came together that night. You could feel it being there that night. And it almost didn't matter who won because the community came together. Fort Bragg did win that game. It was a big game, too, for the NCL1 standings. But it was, a, it was a game I won't forget broadcasting because of the moment and because of the camaraderie and uh, the, uh, the great community feeling that was there that night for both teams. All right, third down and short. Clavel again takes it in the Fort Bragg offensive line doing another outstanding job as they did in the second half at St. Helena as we begin this game. Picking right up where they left off last week over there in Sonoma County. Getting a first down. And the ball now spotted at about the... Looks like just shy of the 15-yard line. Seven minutes left here. Timberwolves also taking some time off the clock. They played 12 minute quarter, so this drive has already consumed five minutes off the clock. Two men split way out here to the right now for Clavel, who will come out of the shotgun. William Robertson, the lone running back behind him on first down at the 15. Gives it to Robertson. Robertson over the left side, then cuts it back towards the middle. Gets some good, maybe about four yards, it looks like, down to about the 11 or 12. Well, shorter pickup than that. Call it about a two yard pickup. Second down and eight. Kind of hard to see on that far side of the field where they line that football up sometimes here from our perspective. No score, 6.23 to go first quarter. Timberwolves have taken this opening kickoff and have been steadily moving it downfield. In the red zone now. Right over center goes Clavel. Out of the power eye again. They'll give it to Robertson, sweeping the right side. He's got some blockers out there. Cuts it around, cuts it back. Dice for the pylon. Can't get there, but he's out of bounds. Let's see where they spot it. He's going to be short of the first down, I think. He, his plant foot, when he dove, actually went out of bounds. Otherwise, he would have been right inside the one, it looked like, just short of the pylon. But that plant foot hit the sideline, and he's out of bounds. Short of the first down, and again, for the third straight time, it's going to be third down and about a yard. Clock stops with that ball going out of bounds. 5.57 to go. First quarter, no score. Curdi splitting way out left. Myrtle splits out to the right. Ponce slotted inside him. The lone back is Robertson. And again, Clavel takes it right up the middle. He's got first down yardage. Inside the five, down to the four, and the Timberwolves have it first and goal. I may have been premature, but I'm pretty sure that's a first down. They haven't moved the change yet, though. Now they do. First down, Timberwolves. So
So Fort Bragg also, I hope I don't give it the announcer's curse, but mistake free so far on this drive. And now they got it first and goal at the four in that power eye formation. Gravel gives it to Robertson. He's hitting the backfield and is not going to get much. Might uh, might have got a yard from diving forward after he was hit. Second and goal. Looked like that ball was designed to go outside the football that time, but it uh, got sealed off quickly, and Robertson had to go back inside. Second and goal, the ball spotted about the three-yard line. Power eye again, Ponce the fullback. William Robertson back behind him in the I formation. Clavel right over center. Gives it to Robertson, and he's in there. Touchdown, Timberwolves. They've taken the opening kickoff, and they have driven it down into the end zone with a steady ground game. And Fort Bragg takes a 6-0 lead, 4.48 to go first quarter. I'm sorry, 9.48 to go first quarter. Or no, is it? It's 4.48. I thought maybe the scoreboard uh, had a, a light out over there. <laughs> but uh, they did take seven minutes off the clock on that drive. Now, that's old-fashioned football. Myrtle now to try the extra point for the Timberwolves. They've struggled a little bit at times on their extra points this year. There's a snap. Spots down. The kick is blocked. And that has been a problem. Several kicks have been blocked this year by the opponents on the extra point attempts. But the good news is with 4.48 to go first quarter, the Timberwolves have scored first. The score, Fort Bragg, six. Middletown, nothing. Lindy Peters from MendocinoTV.com. And we'll see what the Middletown Mustangs have on offense. You're going to see something Similar, I think, coming at you here the other way when they get the football. The Timberwolves defense has steadily improved over the season. They opened the season with a big loss down at uh, Castlemont in Oakland. And uh, they came back with a victory over Valley Christian, and then they were defeated in a close game by Durham. And overall, as the season has progressed, they have steadily improved. And last week against St. Helena, they played very well. They also played pretty well against uh, Kelseyville uh, two weeks ago, or three weeks ago it was now. So uh, the point is uh, they need to have a good game again here tonight because Middletown will bring it on offense. All right, Cody Velocity to kick it off. There's a kick. If it's a high end over end kick towards the sideline and right to the coach and out of bounds. So that'll be a penalty, and the Mustangs will no doubt accept that penalty and take the ball right where it went out of bounds, which was at about the 38 yard line. So. It's five yards from where it went out of bounds. So actually very good field position for the Mustangs. They'll take over the ball at their own 44-yard line. First down, Middletown. So here we go. Over center is our quarterback, R.H. Hess. He's a senior. Backs split behind him. One receiver wide right. Formation strong. Back to pass is Hess. He rolls. He throws. Got a man open. Makes the catch. And breaks a couple of tackles and has got a first down, but I think there's a penalty flag down. The receiver that time was Dylan Tingle. They'll mark it up. I guess there was not a flag. I thought I saw a flag go down, but they're moving the chains and moving the ball up, so first down. Nice play that time as Middletown put the ball in the air. Coach Perkins talking to him before the game, scouted Middletown and said that uh, Hess is a, a pretty good quarterback. He could throw the ball pretty well. So backs once again back behind in the split formation. Hess back to pass, looking this way. Throw blocked in the air and incomplete. Second down. One of the linemen got his hands up. Might have been Mitchell that time. Timberwolves are at full strength last weekend, or last Friday night, I should say, at St. Helena. They were not at full strength. Uh, John Rexrode was not suited up. And uh, Segura also was not suited up. But Jeremy is suited up tonight as is Mr. Rex Road, and they're out there on the field. Second and 10 now for Middletown. Up to the line of scrimmage, Hess will take it right over center. Backs now in the eye formation. Looks like they might be running to the left tackle side. They do, and uh, underneath making the stop that time is Julian Clavel coming up 
from his linebacker or safety position, and it'll be third down and eight. Little or no gain that time. So third and eight. See if the Mustangs put it in the air. I don't know that they're in four down territory. They're at the Timberwolves 41 yard line. They may be depending on what happens on this play. Third down and eight. Hess directing his back now to go back behind him a little bit from that wing spot. Man comes in motion now. They give to the man in motion, trying sweeping around the left side and he is hit and dropped. Cody Velocity comes up and makes the stop. For a loss, back at the 45 yard line. They sniffed that play out nicely. It's fourth down and 11, and we'll see if the Mustangs punt or go for it here. It's early enough in the game, 6 nothing, that I would guess they would punt, knowing Coach Fortner. He's a pretty uh, straightforward, traditional coach. And this early in the game, as I said, I you know you may look for a, a fake, uh, and I could hear the coaches down on the sideline yelling that same thing, watch out for a fake. You got three backs up ahead of the punter at about the 41 yard line. There's a snap back. The punt is away. Nice kick. Taken back at the 17 yard line by Clavel. Sweeping to the left sideline. He goes to the 20, to the 25, to the 30, and up across the 35 yard line. So a nice return from Julian Clavel. The Timberwolves have it. First down at their own 37 yard line. 2.44 to go. First quarter, 6 0. The Timberwolves with the lead and a good start. Offensively, they moved the ball down the field, took seven minutes off the clock, scored a touchdown. Extra point was blocked, but then on defense, a three and out. Well, one first down and then a three and out. So good job by the defense that time as they get the ball back to the offense, leading 6 nothing. Robertson remains in the backfield with Ponce. Clavel coming up to the line of scrimmage. We'll take it right over center. Another power formation, strong formation right side. The ball coming this way. Ponce gets it this time and follows his blockers up across the 40 to about the 41. Call it a three-yard pickup. It'll be second down and seven. Beautiful night for football. Glad you've joined us here on MedicinoTV.com. Middletown. Not uh, a close drive by any stretch of the imagination, but well represented across the sidelines there. Good crowd. And the Mustang football program always has a, a very supportive uh, group of folks over there in Middletown that follow the team, both at home and away. So second down and seven for Fort Bragg at their own 41. Clavel gives it to the first guy, Robertson, who leapfrogs the first guy and then only picks up maybe a yard, setting up third down at about five. Under two minutes to go, first quarter. Well, here's a nice third down situation for the Timberwolves. Big play for the defense, too, for Middletown. Fort Bragg's offensive line doing a good job here so far tonight. Now, three men split out to the left. William Robertson and the Timberwolves are going to call a timeout. Roy Perkins, I think, thought maybe they might be taking a little too much time and they didn't want a penalty here on third down, so he takes a timeout. Third and five, we'll take a timeout with 1.21 to go first quarter. It's Fort Bragg six and Middletown nothing. And again, the community businesses that make it possible to bring you this game tonight include Dunlap Roofing, Mendocino Cookie Company, and Zappa's Coffee, North Coast Brewing Company, Ryan Perkins, Attorney at Law, Roundman's Smokehouse and Butcher Shop, Sport Chrysler, Jeep Dodge, and Fort Bragg Transmission and Auto Repair. Our thanks to those local businesses that make it possible to bring you Timberwolves football here tonight under the lights at Timberwolves Stadium. Well, after that timeout, Fort Bragg will have it third down and five. They have to get it out to about the 48-yard line to get a first down. All spotted right at the 43. So we'll see what they run. Kurt Eyes splits out here to the right. Vertle, top of your screen left. Over center, Julian Cavell backs or split behind him. And a fumble on the snap. And it looks like they were trying to draw Middletown off sides and the, and the center snapped it anyway. I, I don't know, it just looked like no one moved and the ball was snapped. 
And oftentimes what you'll do is you'll try and draw a team off sides on third and five and get a freebie. And um, I, I wonder if uh, one out of 11 didn't quite understand the play and that was the most important guy. I don't know. It could have just been a, a miscommunication by the quarterback. But in any case, Timberwolves did recover the fumble, but they'll have to punt now fourth and four. There's a snap. Pons gets a punt away. It's a low kick. Takes a Fort Bragg bounce. It goes out of bounds at about the 30-yard line, so no return that time. And Fort Bragg will put their defense back out there again with 36.7 seconds to go. First quarter, Fort Bragg six. Middletown, nothing. Mustangs, you see some of them wearing the pink socks. A lot of athletes wearing pink this month of October. All right, right over center, Hess with his backs in the I formation. This is that power eye. Going to try and seal off the side and probably go to the right. Let's see. There's that pitch to the right. Here it comes. They seal it off this time a little bit, and they get some yardage. But nice move by Cody Velasi once again underneath the blockers. He came underneath and was able to tackle Nico Barrio with uh, little or no gain. Second down and 10. I thought that play was going to bust open there when it got to this edge, but uh, Velasi came around. Crossed nicely there and made the stop. So second down, no gain, second and 10. Barrio remains in the backfield along with Tingle. Hess at quarterback. And there's the end of the first quarter. How about that? The score at the end of the first 12 minutes tonight, it's Fort Bragg 6 and Middletown nothing. I'm Lindy Peters from MendocinoTV.com. We'll freeze our camera on the scoreboard here and get set for the second quarter. But again, at the end of one, it is Fort Bragg 6, Middletown nothing. I'm Lindy Peters from MendocinoTV.com. We'll take a short little break here and get set for some more football in just a couple seconds. So the teams will shift positions now, and again, there's no win tonight, so there's no advantage one way or another to whatever side of the field you're on. Fort Bragg on defense, second and 10 for the Mustangs. Ball right at the 30-yard line. This time, very tight formation, double tight end, back split behind Hess. And he gives. Second man through. Big hole this time, but he's going to be short of the first down. Tripped up by Ponce nicely. That was uh, Drake Harberson with the ball. He picked up about nine, I think. It's going to be third down, about a yard. Again, what you do defensively against Middletown is you look to see where that wing and where the tight ends are lined up and... Typically, they'll run to that side. They do have a counter, though, where they'll take a step that direction, try and get you to flow that way, and then come back the other way. Third and one, high formation for the Mustangs. Defense stacks up. There's to give the first man coming through, and he's got the first down, I think. Across the 40, anyway, and it is a first down across the 41-yard line. That was Tingle who picked up the first down. First and 10. Well, you wonder if that missed extra point is going to come back and haunt the Timberwolves. Actually, it was a blocked kick. Long way to go here tonight. 41-yard line, first down, middle town. And one of the Mustangs on the left guard, it looked like, moved. It's going to be procedure against Middletown, and not too many penalties tonight, but... So five yards the other way, and the Timberwolves will take it. First and 15. Ball at the 36-yard line. Now 
Both teams running the football most of the time here so far. First and 15, we'll see if Middletown puts it in the air here. Back to pass is Hess, play action. Got a man wide open, he makes the catch at the 40 to the 30, and down he goes at the 28. Making the catch that time was Nash Field. So big play on third and 15. They get a or first and 15. They get a first down all the way down to the Timberwolves 30 yard line. First down, Middletown. One man splits way out here to the right. Pass over center with his backs in the I formation. He gives to the second man, Tingle. Stiff arms one man and then it stopped. Robertson and Myrtle combine on the stop. I'm sorry, that was not Tingle. That was Harberson, the ball carrier. Call it a loss, second and 11. Ball back now at about the 31. Big play, uh, Hess Field actually was so open, I thought that might go all the way, but it was a big play. Second down and 11, nonetheless. Hess gives to the first guy coming through, and he's got little or nothing. That time stopped nicely. That was Cody Velasi in on the stop. Also, Mitchell and Myrtle helped him finish him off. No gain again. Third down and 10. We're in the second quarter. Fort Bragg, six. Middletown, nothing. 9.05 to go in the second quarter. And another third down along for Middletown. They put it in the air and got a nice play for a first down to bring it all the way down to this point of the field and now it's third and ten again. Harverson splits way out to the right. Man goes in motion. Back to pass is Hess. He's looking that way. Pump fakes and he is sucked! <laughs> Isaac Arnold also in there for the Timberwolves was Price. The sack bringing it all the way back to the 40 yard line. Fourth down and over 20 yards to go for a First down, and that was a big play. It looks like they were setting up a swing pass to Barrio out in the left flat, and uh, Hess was wise not to throw it because the Timberwolves had that defense nicely, and then uh, there was really nothing he could do but drop back and, and take a sack at that point. Rex Road back to receive the punt. Middletown to kick it from about their 45-yard line. There's the snap. Bad snap. Gets a bounce. It's on the ground. Myrtle tackles one man. The ball's picked up. He's running. Still on his feet, and down he goes with a penalty fag. Comes flying in there. Well, that was an odd play. <laughs> Nico Barrio picked up that ball, and, you know, it, for a moment looked like he might get away up the left sideline. He is a, a skilled player, you know, he's one of their ball carriers. And now we'll see what the penalty's about. It came flying in there. You almost usually there's a block on on something like that, some sort of a legal block, but you never know. Let's wait and see what they call here. It had been pretty penalty free here up until now, and now. So they didn't take the penalty because, well, I think it was after a change of position. Anyway, it doesn't matter. The bottom line is, as you would expect, that was a fourth down play. The ball is spotted at their own 46-yard line, and they'll have it first down, Timberwolves. Lavelle gives it to the second back. That's Rex Ro or William Robertson in the game, picking up about five or six. Of a good gain. 7.41 to go in the second quarter. Fort Bragg, 6, Middletown, nothing. Lindy Peters here from MendocinoTV.com. Thanks for joining us here this evening under the lights at Timberwolves Stadium. That was a longer gain than I thought. Six-yard gain, second and four. Curdi splits way out here to the left. Clavel will take it out of the shotgun. And he fakes the handoff and keeps it himself, and he's going to go down for a loss. That play was not, they were not fooled one bit that time. That was Nash Field 
Also in on the stop for Middletown was Brett Clevenger. And a loss, third down and six. Ball just short of midfield. Almost looked like Middletown was expecting Clavel to keep that ball the entire time. Two players who could have gone for the fake, neither one of them did. And they both combined for the stop. Third down now for the Timberwolves. Clavel takes a snap from the shotgun, looks over the middle, pass to Curta. He's got it right over the middle. He's got a first down and more to the 40, to the 35, and out of bounds at about the 32-yard line. The same play that worked so well against St. Helena has worked again tonight. That was a big play to open the second half, you might recall, on a third down play at St. Alita last week, if you were there or saw the game. And there it is again, successfully getting a first down on third and long. And Fort Bragg has it first down, spotted at the 33-yard line of Middletown. 6.22 to go, second quarter, 6 nothing Timberwolves. Myrtle splitting out here to left now. Clavel out of the shotgun. Takes a snap, gives it to the first guy coming through. That's Rex Road. He's got some good yardage. Again, picking up four or five yards across the 30 down to about the 28. And the Timberwolves offensive line. Once again, doing a good job. One of the Middletown Mustangs is down. Timeout called now for injury. And let's hope he's okay. Coach Fortner's out there. Seeing if he's in need of some medical attention or this is maybe the wind knocked out. You just don't know when a player's lying like that on their back. Sometimes it's just the wind knocked out of him. He doesn't se seem to be holding his leg or his arm or anything. Taking his helmet off now. Again, this is one, one of the things you just do not like to see at any level. And he's up and seems to be okay. So that was Grayson Rockwell. Grayson Rockwell walking off, seems to be okay. Second down and about five for the Timberwolves as we come back to action here. 6.09 to go in the half. Fort Bragg with a 6 nothing lead. Game moving along fairly quickly here as uh, the Timberwolves and the Mustangs keeping the ball on the ground for the most part. Nice pass play to Curti a moment ago, though. Got the Timberwolves down into Middletown territory. Clavel right over center, pitches back to Rexro, trying to get around the left side. Now he cuts it back inside, still got his feet under him, and then gets inside the 20 to the 19. That is a Timberwolves first down in the red zone. Looked like Rexro was going to go down that time, and he just kept churning and got some good yardage on that run. So first and 10, right inside the 20 at the 19-yard line. Clavel gets his formation set up. Now I'm putting Curti on the other side. Myrtle comes across the formation as well. Robertson to lone back behind Clavel out of the shotgun. And the Timberwolves, I think, are going to burn another timeout because it took too long to get that formation. 5.29 to go in the half. That's still, you've got 5.29 to go in the half and um, still got one timeout. So that was, again, a good timeout. You're in the enemy territory in the red zone there, and you just don't want to make a, a mistake like too much time, delay a game. That's a mistake where it's more of a mental mistake oftentimes than, a, than an actual mistake. And as any coach will tell you, you'll forgive physical mistakes, but mental mistakes, that's, that's why you have a practice, and that's why you draw things up and, and try and work on them because you don't want to make those mental mistakes. Nonetheless, it's going to be first and 10 at the 19-yard line for Fort Bragg. Clavel, same formation. Myrtle and Curtis split out right. Robertson behind Clavel out of the shotgun. They'll give it to Robertson as he goes over to the left side, cuts it back inside, breaks a tackle inside the 10 down to the 6-yard line. Another Timberwolf first down if they spot it where it looks like it's uh, going to be spotted. It'll be first and goal. William Robertson, who had such an outstanding game last week at St. Helena, is picking up right where he left off, really with some tough yardage. 
oftentimes when you try and get outside, you'll get outside and, you know, you'll, you'll be clean. No one will even touch you. But uh, Robertson is having to cut it back inside. They're doing a good job of outside containment. Middletown, really, for the most part. Yardage has been inside. There's another inside handoff to Rex Road. And there he breaks a tackle inside the five, down to about the four. Second a goal. And best of all, the clock continues to run. And if you've got the lead, that's what you want to happen. Six, nothing the score. 4.46 to go in the half. Fort Bragg knocking on the door down inside the five now at the four-yard line. Second and goal. Kurdai comes out. Robertson in the backfield. Arenas also checks in. Rex Road comes out. Ponce and Robertson right out of that power eye formation. Clavel looks back behind him. Takes a snap. Gives it to William Robertson. He's got some good yardage. He's in. Touchdown. Timberwolves. 4-10 to go in the half, and the Timberwolves have scored again. It's 12-0 Fort Bragg. Good old smash mouth football. Fort Bragg taking advantage of their offensive line the last uh, half of the game at St. Helena and the first half of this game tonight so far have been dominant. Now they'll go for two. Clavel out of that same formation, the power eye. Robertson at tailback. They'll give it to Robertson. Over the left side, fighting, fighting. I don't think he got there, though. No, he did not. So, again, the extra point attempt is no good. And the score, with 4.10 to go before half, it is Fort Bragg 12 and Middletown nothing. I'm Lindy Peters from MendocinoTV.com. Thanks for joining us here on a Friday night. Pretty nice, really. I uh, thought it might get pretty cold, and it still might, but uh, that cold marine layer fog hasn't rolled in just yet. You can see it a little bit on your screen starting to roll in. There are times when uh, it's pretty hard to even follow the ball with our camera <laughs> here at Timberwolves Stadium uh, when that marine layer rolls in. But uh, so far, so good tonight. Fort Bragg 12, Middletown nothing. As I said, this is a big game. If the Timberwolves can get a win here tonight and beat Willits next week, then they're pretty much... Uh, Guaranteed a playoff spot, I would think, and might even get a home game. Good chance that uh, Fort Bragg will have that home game, but there's a long ways to go before then. They got to get a win here tonight. They got to get a win again next week. So can't really start thinking about that, but something to sort of keep in the back of your mind. There's a bouncing kickoff fielded up by field. And the tackle made it about the 40-yard line by Velocity, who kicked it off and then made the tackle. Don't see that too often. First down at the 40-yard line. And once again, the uh, Mustangs will have good field position to start on offense. Fort Bragg 12, Middletown nothing. 4.04 to go, first half. Hess gets his... Instructions from the sideline and trots out there. <laughs> Mustangs come up to the line of scrimmage with that tight double tight end formation. Wing on the left side. See if they run that way. They do. They give it to Tingle. Tingle over the left tackle and he gets about three. Second down and seven. Under four minutes to go in the half. Getting a little bit of that uh, cool air now. May have spoke too soon. Middletown breaks a huddle and comes up to the line of scrimmage. Mario splits out here to the right. Clevenger splits out left backs in the I formation behind Hess. Hess looks over to the sideline for a moment now. Taps his back. Back to pass, looking to his left, throws, got the man there. Clevenger makes the catch. Robertson knocks him out of bounds, but not before he gets a first down. Across midfield to the Timberwolves 46-yard line. 3.14 to go in the half. We'll keep our eye on the clock. Fort Bragg with a 12-0 lead. 
Clevenger got open that time rather easily, just ran an out pattern. One thing that happens when you run the football a lot, you can lull the defense into thinking every play is going to be a run and, and effectively throw the football. First and ten for the Mustangs. Hess gives. Barrio trying the right side. Oh, he's hit hard and dropped back. That time that was uh, Delgado, number 74, that made the big hit. Pavel also came in. Maybe a yard, second and nine. Under three minutes to go now here in this half. Right out of that power eye again. Wing on this right side. Tight end over here as well. Look for him to maybe run this way. Instead, back to pass. Hess. Got a lot of time. Throws it over the middle. Deep pass. Barrios there. Can't make the catch. Incomplete. Good coverage from William Robertson. And Hess is down. He was hit hard that time as he threw the ball. Segura made the hit. And he is still on the ground. I hope he's okay. He took a hit right as he threw that football. That ball was there. It was a nice throw. Uh, both players going for it and just maybe a foot or a yard overthrown. That's going to have to come out for a play because anytime you stop action for an injury, you have to come out for a play. Hess will come out, and they'll have another quarterback for at least one play on third down and long. So a new quarterback is in there over center. I think that's Perez. I didn't quite see his number. It is. Perez back to pass. And he throws, and it's caught short of the first down, but it's four-down territory here. How about that? Comes off the bench and completes a pass up to the 38-yard line of the Timberwolves. Setting up fourth down and three. Two minutes to go in the half. Fort Bragg leading 12 nothing. Perez still in the game. Hess remains on the sideline. Out of that eye formation. They'll pitch it back to Barrio. Barrio trying the right side. Cuts it back. A penalty flag goes down. Tingle might have been guilty of a block in the back that time, number 44 for Middletown. They threw it right in his direction. Let's see. Or, you know, could have been on, on the tackler as well. We haven't seen a whole lot of penalties tonight, thankfully. There it is, holding. Oh, it was not... Tingle. So on that fourth down play, the penalty is declined. It's against Middletown. The Timberwolves will take it take it over first down. A minute 37 to go in the half, leading 12-0. Now, mind you, Middletown will get the ball to begin the second half. So will Fort Bragg sit on it here, or will they try and score? I think they'll just keep it on the ground and see if they can have some success. They give it to William Robertson. He over the right side gets maybe a yard to about the 40. Called second down and nine. Middletown has timeouts left. I'll see if they decide to use them here to see if they can get the ball back. It doesn't look like they're going to. Minute 16, minute 15, minute 14, clock ticking down. Maybe they're happy to just go in at 12 nothing. Backs in the eye formation behind Clavel. Pitch it back to William Robertson. Has a lead block from Ponce. Tries to get over the left side and gets out of bounds at about the 43. Stops the clock. William probably wanted to keep it in bounds on third down, on the, or second down. It's not going to be third down, but I think the idea was to try and keep that ball in bounds if you could. Keep that clock running. 55.5 seconds to go here in this first half as number five goes back out to the huddle. Time for one, maybe two more plays. Third down and call it five. Clavel, play action, 
bootleg, running to his right, going to keep the ball. He's got a first down, and out of bounds he goes. Across midfield to about the 44-yard line of Middletown. Still 46 seconds to go. The Timberwolves might decide to try and go for it here. I don't know. You might recall when Lower Lake tried that here against the Timberwolves. Was it Lower Lake? Anyway, one, one of the games right before halftime, a team got a little uh, <clears throat> pass happy there when maybe they should have run the ball and, and uh, turned into a pick six for four Bragg. Pitch back to William, or Rexroad it is. Rexroad's got some blockers. Ooh, nice play as Rexroad continues to run and slip tacklers. It gets inside the 40 down to about the 36-yard line. And Fort Bragg will call a timeout with 16.3 seconds to go. They got one timeout left, and they use it. Rexroad's going to be short on the first down. It's going to be second down at about a yard. 16 seconds to go if they've got any kind of a trick play or something they think might work to go to distance. Now's the time to see if they can get it to go. So the Timberwolves with a timeout. Talk it over here, leading 12 0. And we want to once again thank our sponsors that make it possible to bring you this broadcast on MendocinoTV.com, including North Coast Brewing Company, Mendocino Cookie Company, and Zappa's Coffee, Dunlap Roofing, Ryan Perkins Attorney at Law, Round Man Smokehouse and Butcher Shop, and Fort Bragg Transmission and Auto Repair, and also Sport Chrysler Jeep Dodge, your favorite sport. So Coach Perkins goes over his last-minute instructions here. 16 seconds to go before half. 12-0 the score. Possibly time for two plays. I wouldn't think any more than that. Maybe just one, depending on what happens. Officials now, as they come back to play, hold the clock for a moment. Now we're set to go. They're going to start that clock as soon as, uh, as, soon as they set the ball down. Or snap the ball. Clavel back to pass, looking over the left sideline, throwing deep for Rex Road, and he falls down, and he's going to get called for pass interference himself, I think. It looked almost as though he contacted number three. Guy Boyd going for the ball more so than the other way, so let's see. Ten seconds to go. Pass interference. It is. Oh, that's... So Rexha looked like he tackled him to prevent the interception, which anyway, I, I'm trying to see where we are on the field here. It's going to be back at the 49-yard line, so it's going to be second down and 15, but there's 10 seconds to go before half, so this should be the final play. So Fort Bragg sends in a play, and like I said, this should be the final play of the half. Timberwolves having trouble getting enough players out on the field for this play. Now they Price runs back out there. Now we're set. Let's see if they get it off. They do, and no gain at all as Rexroad gets the handoff. Oh boy, they blew the whistle. He never even went down. Clock continues to run, and that'll do it. That's the end of the first half. The score, Fort Bragg 12, Middletown nothing. I'm Liddy Peters from MendocinoTV.com. Hey, good first half for the Middletown Mustangs and the Fort Bragg Timberwolves. But on the scoreboard, it's Fort Bragg 12, Middletown nothing. We're going to take a break here for halftime at MendocinoTV.com. So stick around. Boy, this is still anybody's ball game in the second half. Mustangs will get it to begin the second half, so we'll see what happens. But right now, it's all Timberwolves on the scoreboard. Fort Bragg 12, Middletown nothing. We'll be back for the second half here at MendocinoTV.com in a few minutes. I'm Lindy Peters. Stick around. The second half will be coming up.
that's scary. And so without further ado, I'd like to introduce this year's 2008 Gary Mello Foundation Youth Volunteer Award, Year of Award to Annalise Keaton. And in addition to the uh, trophy that we gave to her, we also have a proclamation from our assembly member and our senator from the state of California acknowledging her achievements, as well as a congressional recognition as well from Congressman Huffman. She will also have her name on this plaque that includes other past volunteers that will be in City Hall. And again, congratulations, Annalise. So we also have a plaque uh, for the winner, Annalise, and for our nominees as well, Clay, and Athena. Oh, that's right. And Athena. Yeah, let's get a quick picture here. All right, everybody, welcome back to Timberwolves Stadium. I'm Lindy Peters from EndocinoTV.com. It's Fort Bragg 12, Middletown nothing. If the Timberwolves can get a win here tonight and a win next week, good chance they're headed for the playoffs for the North Coast section and maybe even get a home game. So they really want to continue to have another 24 minutes of solid football here in the second half and try and create their own destiny. All right, we're getting ready for the kickoff. The Timberwolves will be kicking off to begin the second half. Remember, they took the opening kickoff, and they marched it right downfield and scored the first touchdown on this game. So now they'll kick it off to begin the second half. Cody Velocity to kick it off. Clevenger back there to receive. I think that's Barrio back there with him on the near side. So, Velocity to kick it off. There's the kickoff. Low grounder. 
Picked up by Field at the 25. He is hit at the 35-yard line by Rexroad and dropped from the side almost immediately upon hitting the 35-yard line. So first down, Middletown. Hess, the quarterback who was injured briefly to end that first half, is back out on the field. He is uh, right there with his coach on the sideline. There he is trotting out to the huddle now, so that's good to see. Apparently he's going to be okay. First and 10, Middletown at their own 35-yard line. Out of that power formation, backs are split behind Hess. And Timberwolves jump off sides that time. It looked like Segura was the guilty party. A little anxious to begin the first play of the second half. Five yards back the wrong direction, up to the 40-yard line. It'll be first and five. Again, up to the line of scrimmage out of that power formation. Hess gives it to the second man through. Clevenger, boy, he's got some good room, but a nice tackle by Clavel, or he would have possibly got up the sideline to the left there, but a first down nonetheless. I think he only needed five yards. If There it is, first down indication now. So Middletown comes right out and gets a first down. But the penalty, of course, certainly helped. So at the 45-yard line on the far hash mark, first and 10, Middletown. Give to second man coming through again. That's Clevenger, and again, a nice pickup. Close to a first down, about nine yards, as Middletown's come out looking pretty good here in this uh, early action in the second half. Call it a nine-yard gain, second and one. Most of that first half, the Timberwolves dominated the line of scrimmage on both sides of the football, offense and defense. Second and one. Tight formation again for the Mustangs. They give to second man Clevenger, first down and more, and he breaks into the open field to the 30, to the 25. I think he's out of bounds at about the 25-yard line. Same play uh, twice in a row there where they're just basically going off that left tackle on that little counter play. First down, Mustangs at the Timberwolves 27-yard line. And the Timberwolves call a quick timeout as Coach Perkins sees something he needs to tell his players or remind them. Ten twenty-nine to go. We're in this uh, first half, or I'm sorry, first part of the second half in third quarter early on here. Fort Bragg 12, Middletown nothing. So a defensive timeout to try and gather around the coach and see if they can't get up to speed here. Following the timeout, the Mustangs have it on the far hash mark. First down at the Timberwolves, call it the 27-yard line. Backs. In the eye formation, Hess pitches back to the back man. That's Barrio. He cuts around the right side. He's got some room and is horse collared out of bounds at about the 20-yard line. Picks up another big gain, about eight yards, and Middletown now starting to do a much better job blocking up front and getting to the edge and blocking down on the line of scrimmage. So they now bring it down to the 20-yard line where it'll be second down and three. Again, two tight ends. Hess gives to the first man. He's got some room right over the middle, and Ponce drops him, but not before a first down inside the 15 down to the 14-yard line. Nothing fancy, really. Just uh, 
giving it to that first guy through, and it seems like the Timberwolves defense is keying more on the quarterback and the tailback, and by the time they realize the ball carrier has the football, he's almost by them on the, off, on the line of scrimmage anyway. So first and ten, middle town. Hess gives it to Clevenger. This time over left tackle. And gang tackled. Or that's Harbison, the ball carrier. You got 22, 33, and 44 at skill position there. Harbison's 22, Clevenger's 33, and wearing 44 is Tingle. So my apologies, I mixed two of them up there on one of those plays. Anyway, it's Harbison in the backfield along with Tingle now. Hess over center. One man split out left. Man comes in motion now. They give to Tingle. Tingle over the left side. Nothing that time. Third down. Ball right at about the 10-yard line. So big play here. Third down and maybe lost a yard. Third down about seven. Now, remember, the Tigger was missed both extra points. The first touchdown, the kick was blocked. The second touchdown, the two-point conversion failed. So it's 12-0. And you never know at the time, but sometimes those are the kind of failed extra point attempts that can come back and haunt you. Third down at the 10. Hess, back to pass. Throws quickly. Caught. Barrios in. Touchdown, Mustangs. Breaking a tackle at about the 10-yard line. Or inside the 10. Didn't matter. It was a touchdown, and the Mustangs are on the board. It's 10 or 12 to 6. And now let's see what they do for an extra point. So 7.49 to go, third quarter is 12 to 6 now, and here comes the extra point attempt. Snap, spots down, the kick is up, and it is good. So that's huge. It's now 12-7. That means one touchdown, and Middletown takes the lead. If the Timberwolves can't put any more points on the board. So Middletown comes out, takes the second-half kickoff, marches right downfield and scores a touchdown with big chunks of yardage on almost every play. So we'll see if Fort Bragg can answer here with a kickoff. Rex Road will be back to return along with Kurt Eye. Middletown to kick it off from the 40-yard line. Jorge Fonseca, who kicked that extra point, is set to kick it off. Kicks it off, end over end kick, short kick, taken by one of the up men, Price. He gets it across the 35, up to about the 36-yard line. So Fort Bragg will have it. Call it the 37-yard line. 7.43 to go third quarter. Now we got a game. It's 12-7. Timberwolves with the lead. First time they've got the football here in the second half. Backs in the I formation. Clavel over center. There's the give to William Robertson, and that's defended nicely by Middletown this time. Not much. Second down and call of the yard. Second down and nine. Middletown always very well coached. You can bet at halftime any adjustments that needed to be made were certainly passed along to his team from Coach Fortner. Second down and nine. Backs 
split behind Clavel. Play action. Fake rolling to his left. Now he looks like he's going to run. Got a little room and is out of bounds, but picked up some yardage. It's going to be third down and call it six. I think he picked up a couple of yards. Remember, he's a left-hand thrower, so anytime he's rolling to his right, he's got to throw back across his body. And not the easiest throw to make as quarterback when you're on the move. Robertson comes out now on third down and five. Rex showed in. Down to seven minutes to go, third quarter. Ball out of bounds, stopping the clock. Third and five. Big play for the Timberwolves here in the third quarter. Middletown is stacked up to the line of scrimmage. A lot of players pitch back to Rexroad. They've strung it out nicely. Rexroad cuts it back inside. He's short of the first down, and a penalty flag is down most likely against the Timberwolves. Holding against Fort Bragg is the call. So this second half not starting out well at all for the Timberwolves. I guess is Middletown will refuse the penalty. It'll be fourth down, and Timberwolves will have to punt. They might take it to really put them back deep in the territory, and they're going to do that. Well, let's see what happens. They've given the Timberwolves a chance here. Third and 15, they could have taken over the football. Instead of uh, you know, refuse the penalty and they'd had Timberwolves on fourth down, and instead they give him a third down and 15. This is probably where you're going to see that little pass across to Kurdi coming across the middle. There he is, sweeping across. There's a pass, and they sniffed that one out. They were waiting for it. That was Clevenger. And it'll be fourth down. So it worked out. Well, you can only go to the well so many times. That play worked three straight times, but even I knew that was coming. And so did Middletown. So now it's a punt for the Timberwolves here. And bad snap. Ponce fields the snap, gets a kick away. It's a low kick. Fielded by Barrio at the 32. And he's up to the 40. Penalty flags are down right at midfield. And this uh, penalty is going to go against Middletown, I think. It looked to me like there was a penalty all the way back here at about the 35-yard line. Curdi looked like he got blocked from behind. Let's see what the call is. There it is. So there's the uh, penalty against the Mustangs. So 6.26 to go. Fort Bragg leading 12-7. The Mustangs will have the football for the second time here in the second half. They went right down and scored the first time they had the football. So up to the line of scrimmage come the Mustangs. Again, backs. Well, this time they have two wings. Man comes in motion. They'll give it to second man coming through Harborson, and he breaks up the left sideline. He's got some room. He's across midfield. He could go all the way. And he's tackled from behind at the 25-yard line, a saving tackle from the Timberwolves. As William Robertson makes the tackle, at the 28, and this is a completely different half. It's all Middletown so far. Fort Bragg is getting beat on both sides of the line of scrimmage right now. Still leading on the scoreboard 12-7, but they better turn things around here because the Mustangs have got the momentum. Hess, backs are split behind him, two tight ends. Gives it to the first man, and he's not going to get much this time. Well, he does as he breaks through Barrio. And, boy, I tell you what, good second effort that time inside the 20. And Middletown is just grinding out chunks of yardage like the Timberwolves. 
did in the first half. Mustangs down now inside the 20 at the 17-yard line. Eight-yard pickup called second and two. I-formation now behind Hess. Tangle burial behind him. There's his pitch back, but penalty flags will stop the play. There's a five-yard penalty. Second down and seven now. All right, second down now. Seven. Hess over center, double tight end formation. Back to pass. Looks. Throws. Man's there. He's got it. Touchdown, Mustangs. This has been a completely different second half. As Hess put it right on the money. Clevenger made the catch. And the Mustangs have taken the lead. 13 to 7. Or 13 to 12, I'm sorry. On now to kick the extra point is Fonseca. There's a snap, spots down. The kick is looked wide to me, but it's good. Just got through that left upright. So it's 14 to 12, Middletown. And it didn't take them, it took them less than eight minutes to take the lead here in the second half. They took the opening kickoff in the second half, went right down and scored, held the Timberwolves, got the ball, went right down and scored, and easily scored both times. So Fort Bragg's going to have to suck it up here, as they did at St. Helena last uh, week when they trailed at halftime, although it seemed like they really came out strong in the second half, and they sure came out strong in the first half here tonight. But, boy, they are flat right now. But give credit to the Mustangs. They are on fire, and whatever adjustments that uh, they made at halftime have been hugely successful and paid big dividends so far. So the Mustangs will kick it off. Uh, you know, I wouldn't even be surprised to see an onside kick the way things are going. Well, there is a ground ball. And it's sitting there on the field and finally picked up. Nope, it is. I think Fort Bragg has it, but boy. They do. Rex Road gets the loose ball. Well, the Timberwolves will see if they can answer. Starting to get a little chilly here now. 14-12 Middletown. Back split behind Clavel over center. Pitch gives it to first man coming through. Got about four yards from about the 34 up to about the 38. Maybe a three-yard pickup. Call it four, second down and six. Ball here on the near hash mark. Fort Bragg breaks the huddle and comes up to the line of scrimmage. Kurt is splitting way out here left. Backs are in the I formation behind Clavel. Pitch back to William Robertson trying to get around the right side. And he didn't get much, got to about the 40. Third down and call it about five. And again, that first half, the Timberwolves were getting six, seven, eight yards of carry. And here in the second half, boy, it's tough going so far. 3.22 to go, third quarter, 14 12, Middletown.
on the far hash mark. Clavel out of the shotgun now on third down and four. He'll take the snap. Back to pass. Swing pass. Caught by Robertson. Trying to get outside. Gets to the 40. Gets to the 45. Dice forward. I think he's got the first down. A second effort from William Robertson. A beautiful second effort. Gives the Timberwolves a first down at the 48. That pass right on the money, and William Robertson really getting that yardage on his own there after the catch. He comes out now for a play as Rex Road checks back in. First down, Timberwolves at their own 48-yard line. Wyatt splitting out to the right now. Backs in the eye formation. Rex Road at tailback. Clavel over center. Gives it to Rex Road. He's hitting the backfield. And they really have made some adjustments here in the second half. That's Taylor Briner making the stop, the junior linebacker. Second down and 11, loss of a yard. Second down, 11 ball, back at the 47-yard line now. Rex Road in the backfield along with Clavel. Two men split out to the right. Penalty flags are down. Too much time, I think. No, they had uh, one of the defenders was offsides in the neutral zone. So that's a five yards penalty, and that's a good one for the Timberwolves. Second down now and about six. Under two minutes to go here in the third quarter. Fort Bragg trailing by two, 14-12. They give it to Rex Road. He's got some room. Slips one tackler and gets across the 40 to the 34-yard line. Best way to describe Rex Road when he's on the loose, he's slippery. He seems to uh, somehow elude tacklers. All right, first down now at the 34. And whistles, stops action. Penalty flag down. So five yard penalty against the Timberwolves. So it'll be first and 15. It's If you are going to get a five-yard penalty, do it on first down. <laughs> Clock now runs 125 to go in this third quarter. Middletown has scored two unanswered touchdowns and two extra points to take a 14-12 to 12 lead. First and 15. Clavel gives it to Potts. Potts picks up maybe two. Setting up second down at about 12 or 13, down to a minute to go. The Timbers probably will just get one more playoff here in this third quarter. So second down at 13. William Robertson a little late running back out onto the field there. Well, here we go. Clavel right over center. Robertson back behind him. Gives it to William Robertson. Trying to get outside to the left side. Gets around one man. And is out of bounds at about the 30-yard line. He did pick up a few, but it's going to be short of the first down, and that should do it. Actually, the clock stops because he was out of bounds there with uh, 20. can't tell if that's 2.1 seconds or 21 seconds. Anyway. It's third down and six. Big play for the Timberwolves here, although at the 30-yard line of Middletown, they could be in four-down territory. Wyatt way out left. Myrtle split inside him on the slot. They give it to William Robertson over the right side. He's short of the first down. Didn't get much. That'll be the end of the third quarter. The Timberwolves will have it fourth down to begin the fourth quarter, and Middletown leading 14-12. So the clock continues to run. That'll do it. That's the end of the third quarter. The score now, Middletown 14 and Fort Bragg 12. I'm Liddy Peters from MendocinoTV.com. 
Thanks to North Coast Brewing Company, Mendocino Cookie Company, and Zappa's Coffee, Dunlap Roofing, Ryan Perkins, Attorney at Law, Fort Bragg Transmission and Auto Repair, Sport Chrysler, Jeep Dodge, and Roundman Smokehouse and Butcher Shop for bringing you Timberwolves football tonight. We'll take a break. Hey, 12 minutes of football left, 14-12 Middletown. All right, here we go. Fourth quarter now. Fourth down and six for the Timberwolves. The ball at the 29-yard line. And Fort Bragg having trouble getting the right personnel out there. Boy, I tell you what, this is such a big play. You definitely want to... And there's they're moving on. I mean, it's just unbelievable how a play this important, they just completely falling apart right now. No question about it. Just completely falling apart. Wrong personnel out there. Guy takes a step before the snap. Total confusion on a fourth down. Huge play here to begin the fourth quarter. You just can't do that stuff. Now it's fourth and ten. So let's see if they can overcome that mistake. Middletown fired up. Ears pinned back. Here they come. Clavel back to pass. Pumps. Throws. Caught, but short of the first down. So Middletown will take over on downs. First down, Middletown. Ball at the 20. Now, had they not had that penalty, that would have been a first down. As it is, the Mustangs take over first down. And it doesn't take a rocket scientist to see that things seem to be disintegrating for Fort Bragg. And hard to figure out why. Still a lot of time left. 14-12 Middletown. They've got the football at the Timberwolf 29-yard line, but they've been running it very easily here so far in the second half. Man comes in motion across the formation. They give to him, and he is tackled. There's a nice play. Cody Velocity gets in there and makes a stop. That was a big play there. Second down and 15. Five-yard loss, takes it back to the 21-yard line. That's the type of play that Timberwolves need more of right there. So the Mustangs now will we'll see if they put it in the air. They've had success passing. Hess, play action. No, he gives it. Man, Tingles got the ball, got some good yardage up about five or six yards anyway, close to the original line of scrimmage. It'll be third and ten. We'll keep our eye on the clock now. 14-12 Middletown, 10-55 to go in the game. Third and 11 now. Hess has done a good job on third down here. He got a 10-yard touchdown pass just uh Last score on third and ten. So it's third and ten again. Man comes in motion. Hess back to pass. Looking to his right. Scrambles out to his right. Throws it downfield, and it's incomplete. Pass looks like it was intended that time for Clevenger. So it'll be fourth and 11, and the defense for Timberwolves, when they had to, came up with a big hold there. The first play of that series, that sack uh, or that loss of uh, several yards, on a tackle in the backfield by Velocity, the big play defensively in that series. So Rex Road back to receive the punt. Middletown set to punt. Fort Bragg's been victimized by a fake punt twice this year for touchdowns. Not this time. There's the punt. It's away from Rex Road. Takes a Middletown bounce along the sideline. Rex Road touches it, picks it up, drops it. 
And Middletown has it. I think. Middletown has the football. Rex Road tried to pick it up, touched it, and that's not what you want to do. So the Mustangs will have it. And like I said, everything is just going their way right now. And the Timberwolves, I don't know, palms up, shoulders are shrugged. But, boy, this second half, they have completely fallen apart. Completely. First down, Middletown at the 31-yard line. And that time, Middletown jumps. So maybe it's contagious. I'm sure no one feels worse on the field right now than number 23. He had a, a penalty a moment ago against him on fourth down and now commits that first turnover of the game right there. And a huge one it was. So five-yard penalty on first down, first and 15. The ball at the Timberwolves' 36-yard line. Middletown with Hess at quarterback. Gives to the second man coming through, and he's hit and dropped. Cody Velasi made the stop. Another loss of the play. So second down and 16. And if the defense really needs to come through now, if they can hold them here and get the ball back in the offense's hands. There's still a lot of time left, 9.44 to go, but... The clock becomes important now. 14-12 Middletown. Those two missed extra points. As I said, when they missed the first one, could come back and haunt them. And they certainly have right now anyway. Hess, back to pass. Got some time, throws. Oh, nearly intercepted as Clavel stepped in front. And Clevenger that time knocked it away from Clavel as he became the defender. So it's... Uh, see where they're about third down and 18. They're going to have to get down to the 21-yard line for a first down. 9.21 to go. The clock stop here in the fourth quarter with the incomplete pass. Almost intercepted by Clavel that time, and that would have been huge had he been able to do that. So big third down play for Middletown, though, again, they could be in four-down territory. Hess? Gives to the first guy. He's got lots of room, but he slips, trying to cut right at the original line of scrimmage, setting up fourth and 10, 9-13 to go. It looked like Tingle was about ready to bust it back over across the middle, but either slipped or was tripped up right at the uh, original line of scrimmage. So it's fourth down and 10, and the Mustangs will go for it. to go in the game. 14-12 Middletown. Fourth and 10 for the Mustangs. Hess. Fumbles the snap. It's on the ground. And still on the ground. I think Fort Bragg has it. William Robertson got the fumble recovery, and the Timberwolves have it. Not only did they stop him on fourth down, they... Got the ball beyond the line of scrimmage. Now, let's see if they can get organized here on the sideline. Again, not, I'm sure not the coaching fault of what happened in that last series, but they just really couldn't get the right formation, and people were moving before the ball was snapped. See if they get a little more precise here. First down, Timberwolves training 14-12, fourth quarter. Clavel from the shotgun, takes the snap. Gives it to William Robertson, trying to left side. Got some room. Still on his feet. Got a first down and out of bounds near midfield. Across midfield, I think. I think he's right at midfield. 8.27 to go in the game. The Timberwolves on the first drive took seven minutes off the clock and got a touchdown. That's exactly what they need to do right now. Clock running. 8.19 to go. First and 10 right at midfield. Tight formation. Clavel out of the shotgun. He's going to keep it himself, and he's not going to get any. Well, he spins away from one man, but right at the line of scrimmage. Second and 10.
7.55 to go now. Second ball and 10. Ball right in the middle of the field, too. So you've got plenty of room either direction if you want to try and run it outside here. Well, we got some excitement here. Fourth quarter, 14-12, Timberwolves trailing. They got the football here at midfield. Clavel looking this way. Pump fakes. Now he rolls back the other way. Throws. Man's there. Makes a catch. Kurdi got a first down. Inside the 40 to the 39. Whistles blowing and a penalty flag down. That's probably going to, well, let's see. Looks like they might be coming back. So, again, the Timberwolves hurt themselves. They had five men in the backfield. Again, that's, that's not the coach's fault. Second down and 15 now, 721 to go in the game. The Timberwolves losing yardage back down their own territory at their 45. Myrtle splits way out here to the right. Rex Road and Curdi to the left. And Timberwolves call a timeout. Well, there's 721 to go in the game. No sense in saving your timeouts if uh, the Timberwolves should at least save one. And they do have one left. But Coach Perkins, again, wanting to talk things over here. And it almost seems like the team somehow mentally shifted gears at halftime and they just don't seem to have the same precision that they had in the first half. Having trouble getting the right personnel in the field. Uh, those are the kind of things you just, you know, five men in the backfield lining up wrong. Um, you can't do that in a game you really have to win, especially when you trail by two points. And especially in the fourth quarter, now every play becomes important. Second down and 15. After the timeout, Curdi splits out to the left. Clavel will go right over center now. Two backs behind him. Play action fake. Clavel, a lot of time. Now he's getting pressure. Now he throws as he's hit. The ball's in the air. It's caught! Inside the 20 down to the 17-yard line. Justin Myrtle as Clavel got hit right as he threw it. 7-10 to go in the game. First big passing play of the night for the Timberwolves as Clavel put it on the money and Justin Myrtle made the catch. So 7 4 to go in the game. Fort Bragg has it now at the Looks like the 17-yard line. Far hash mark. Power eye formation now for the Timberwolves. Clavel pitches back. Rexro trying the right side. Now he cuts it back inside. And gets to about the 10, I think. Depends where he went out of bounds. But he got some decent yardage there. Ball spotted at the 11-yard line, five-yard pickup, second and five. At this point, you want, I don't know if you want the clock to run or not, but I think you want to take some time off the clock here if, indeed, you're going to get a touchdown. There's still a lot of time left, 640. Clavel pitches back to Rex Road. He cuts it back inside and is dropped immediately. No gain, third down. Clock runs, 6.29 to go. Look, that play was designed to go outside. Drexel tried to cut it back inside, and boy, he was licked. Hit hard right at the line of scrimmage. William Robertson trotting out on the field now. Price comes out. Timberwolves hoping to get this play off and get a first down if they can. Third down at the 10. Clavel out of the shotgun, running that spread formation. Back to pass, looks, pumps, in trouble, rolls, throws, caught, touchdown, Timberwolves! 
John Rexroad, Julian Clavel, flushed out of the pocket, found the open man, back over near the goal post. And touchdown, Timberwolves, they take the lead back. 18-14 the score. You got to go for two here. 5.49 to go. Still plenty of time to go in this game. And the Timberwolves answer with a big passing play. A touchdown from Clavel to John Rexrove. Set up by a pass to Justin Myrtle. All right, they go for two. Clavel fumbles the snap, gets up, and he's short. So they just can't get a conversion. It's been a season-long problem, really. Anyway, the, the good thing is they're ahead. The score with 5.49 to go in the game. It's Fort Bragg 18 and Middletown 14. But the Mustangs still have a lot of time left. The defense for the Timberwolves, now it's their game to win. They have got to hold them. Now Middletown has shown the ability to get the ball in the air and get some yardage. So you can bet, although there's still 5.49 to go, but my guess is you'll see the ball in the air a little bit more from the Mustangs now on this series. I remember an old football coach saying he didn't like to pass because three things can happen when you pass, and two of them are bad. Uh... meaning an interception or an incompletion. But there's also pass interference. You also, maybe two of them are good, too, along with a complete pass. Anyway, here's the kickoff. Cody Velasi, kind of a spiraling low kick, taken at about the 25-yard line, dances his way up to the 30, to the 35, up to the 40. So now, with 5.40 to go in the game, the Mustangs have the football. Trailing 18-14. So John Rexrode, who felt bad a few minutes ago, feels a lot better now after scoring that touchdown. First and 10. It's up to the defense now. For the Timberwolves, the Mustangs with one back in the I formation behind Hess. Back comes in motion. That's Barrio. They give instead, coming the other way on the counter. And that was Harbison, I think, the ball carrier. See when he gets up. Yeah, it's 22 Harbison. He picked up a couple, maybe three. Second down and seven. 5.24 to go in the game. Middletown chooses to keep it on the ground on that first play. Mustangs come up now, two backs, Tingle and Harbison behind Hess in the I formation. Hess gives to Tingle. Second man through, Harbison stiff arms a man, and down he goes across the 35 to the 34. Big gain there, under five minutes to go in the game now, all the way down to the Timberwolves 32 yard line. Boy, big holes in. The line here in the second half for the Mustangs as Harbison broke through there clean. Let's go, boy. <coughs> Keep our eye on the clock. 4.40 to go in the game. 18-14 Timberwolves. Again, that power formation. Two tight ends and a wing. They give it to the first guy. and He's not going to get much. He's dropped back. Velocity and Mitchell. Or that's uh, Isaac Arnold, that is, underneath that made the stop. Clock continues to run now, 421 to go in the game. No gain, second and 10. Harbison, who had that nice carry a few minutes ago, is on the sideline now, limping a little bit as Hess brings him out of the huddle to the line of scrimmage. The Mustangs with the ball, trailing 18-14, 358 to go in the game. Second and 10 at the Timberwolves, 34. Yes, back to pass, looking over the middle, throws, got a man there, he dives, and incomplete. 
Ball hit the ground. Man seems to have a cramp as he gets up. So it's going to be third and ten. Clock stops, though. 3.43 to go. So big third down play now. Mustangs probably put it in the air. Of course, trailing 18-14, 3.43 to go in the game. They are certainly in th- uh, four-down territory. The timber was 34. I don't think Middletown has called a timeout, but, boy, they're sure taking a long time. Now they're going to call a timeout. So they call a timeout with 3.43 to go in the game. They still have two timeouts left. Fort Bragg leading 18-14. I'm Lindy Peters from MendocinoTV.com. And, again, we want to thank the folks that make it possible to bring you Timberwolves football here live on the web, including Roundman Smokehouse and Butcher Shop, Fort Bragg Transmission and Auto Repair, Sport Chrysler Jeep Dodge, Ryan Perkins Attorney at Law, Dunlap Roofing, Mendocino Cookie Company and Zappa's Coffee, and North Coast Brewing Company. Thanks so much for bringing you Timberwolves football. Whether you're watching at home, here locally, or maybe you're somewhere far away, wherever you might be, thanks for joining us here. High def camera work. And a beautiful night for football, and what a game. 18-14 Fort Bragg. The Timberwolves in a must-win situation here if they want to go to the playoffs, pretty much. Unless a lot of strange things happen, they really need a win here tonight. And right now they're in the lead, 18-14. Here we go, third and ten. Back to pass is Hess. A lot of time. Throwing deep. Clavel's back there, and he knocks it away. Fourth and ten. Has put plenty of uh, air under that one, throwing it about 50 yards downfield, but incomplete, and it's fourth and 10. 3.35 to go in the game. Now, remember, Middletown still has two timeouts, so if they don't convert on fourth down and Fort Bragg gets the football back, Middletown can stop the clock with two consecutive timeouts. So Fort Bragg will still have to get a couple of first downs or at least move the football once for a first down if they're able to hold them here. The fans showing some excitement now. Fourth and ten, Middletown up to the line of scrimmage. Three men split out right. Harbison trying to get off the field, and a penalty flag will go against Middletown. I think they had too many men on the field. There you go. So a five-yard penalty against Middletown, 12 men in the huddle. I saw Harbison running to the sideline trying to get there before the ball was snapped, and there was almost uh, 12 men on the field, and now I guess Middletown's going to use another timeout. Well, it it makes sense. They'll only be able to stop the clock one more time now if Fort Bragg can hold them here on fourth down. 3.35 3.35 to go, Fort Bragg 18, Middletown 14. I understand looking online tonight, although some of you may be watching a replay of this game, but St. Alina is beating Cloverdale, beating them pretty badly. 30-14 to 14, the last I saw. If that holds up, Kelseyville is in the driver's seat, and uh, whoever wins this game is looking pretty good for a playoff berth no matter what happens, but it's kind of a surprise that St. Helena is uh, beating Cloverdale as badly as they are. A little scoreboard watching here. All right, fourth and 15. Big play for both teams. Has back to pass. He's got time. He throws, and it's... Incomplete. The Timberwolves have taken over on downs. Clavel with a great job defensively on the last two pass plays. 3.27 to go in the game. So let's set it up. Middletown could stop the clock one time with a timeout. Fort Bragg needs to get at least one first down, maybe two. They got it at their own 39-yard line. They have to play mistake free. 3.27 3.27 is a lot of time in football, even at the high school level. 
So the Timberwolves come up to the line. Robertson in the backfield. Rex Road going out. Split wide left. Clavel just keeps it right up the middle. The old football scrum takes time off the clock. Picks up about four. Second down and six. Of course, just right up the middle, that's one less, you know, of a chance for a fumble on a handoff if you just take the snap and go right up the middle. But I think really ideally now under three minutes to go in the game, 259, 258, 18-14 Timberwolves. Getting a little bit of a quiet here after the uh, crowd really got into it a moment ago. Now just sort of a, a tense moment, edge of your seat kind of a feel here. Second down and six. Clavel will give it to Rexrode this time. Left side and fighting for a first down. He fumbles. And Middletown has it. I think Middletown stripped the ball out. They did. First down, Mustangs. So 2.36 to go, and the one thing you couldn't afford to have happen just happened. I don't know how it happened, but, you know, you, you're coached uh, – <laughs> At that point in the game, to hold on to that football as if it's your firstborn baby. So Middletown has it back, and they got a chance. 18-14, the ball at midfield. There's a give. Harbinger's hit in the backfield and stopped by Isaac Arnold. 228, 227 to go in the game. No gain, second down and 10. The ball right at the Middletown, or right at the Timberwolves 47 yard line. So Fort Bragg's defense has to do it again as their offense turned it over quickly. Pass, gives, that play's been very successful and here it comes again. Oh, a nice tackle that time by Rex Road or he'd have broken open into the field there and instead it's gonna be third down and short, third and two, under two minutes to go in the game. Clock runs, 151, 150. Look for Middletown to put it in the air now. Third and two. My guess is they're going to start putting it in the air because time's running out, and they're 47 yard, or 41 yards away from the end zone. Third down. Hess. Gives. First down. Harvard serve. Breaks a tackle. Gets inside the 30 to the 29. 127 to go. Clock stops as they move the chains. Field goal won't help. It's 18-14. They need a touchdown. Fort Bragg needs to hold them. 120 to go. 119. One man splits way out left. Hess with back split behind him. Takes a snap. Play action fake. Rolls right. Throws. Man trying to get the ball. It's loose. It's incomplete. With a minute of six to go. That ball was tipped around in the air. Almost looked like a juggling act there. Second and 10, 106 to go. Ball at the 30, well, 29-yard line of the Timberwolves. Crowd really getting into it again. Middletown up to the line of scrimmage. Hess, two men split out to the right. Back to pass. Getting some pressure. Rolling to his right. He's got some time. Short pass. Cody Velocci makes the tackle, but a penalty flag is down. Penalty flag is down. 58 seconds to go in the game. You'd sure hate to see this game turn on a penalty. They talk it over right at the 30-yard line. Well, give it. <laughs> there goes the clock. 57, 56, 55 seconds to go in the game. The ball at the 30-yard line. 
third down. Four down territory. Hess over center. Three men split out here left. He looks this way. He rolls this way. He throws. And it is incomplete. Fourth down. 33 seconds to go in the game. Four people collided with that football that time. And still time for one more play. Feel bad for Drake Harbison, the Middletown player, really limping badly, but giving it his all for the Mustangs. Both teams just leaving it on the field now. This has been a tremendous game. The first half belonging to Fort Bragg, the second half belonging to Middletown, but Fort Bragg leading 18-14. Fourth down, 33 seconds to go in the game at the 30-yard line. And timeout. Timberwolves as Roy Perkins calls a timeout and silences the crowd. Whew. Well, certainly been the most excited game of the year, maybe the last few years, actually. The Fort Bragg Timberwolves leading 18-14, 33.8 seconds to go, fourth and 10. Unless there's a penalty or a first down, this game should end in favor of the Timberwolves. But, hey, Middletown can pull out a miracle here. I've seen it at this level many times. Our thanks again to North Coast Brewing Company, Mendocino Cookie Company, Zappa's Coffee, Dunlap Roofing, Ryan Perkins Attorney at Law, Sport Chrysler Jeep Dodge, Fort Bragg Transmission and Auto Repair, and Round Man Smokehouse and Butcher Shop for sponsoring Timberwolves football here tonight. Here we go, fourth down at the 30. Hess, three men split to the right, one man out here left. He's Throws it over the middle, and there it is. It's in the air, and it is incomplete. Timberwolves take over on downs with 26.5 seconds to go in the game. There's no timeouts. This should do it. All they have to do is kneel on the football. The Fort Bragg Timberwolves are going to win it. Well, I guess, theoretically, they could find a way to lose the game. <laughs> but uh, you never know. So there's the snap. There's the knee. 25 seconds to go. That's the game. The Fort Bragg Timberwolves had to win, and they did. Coming from behind in the fourth quarter on a touchdown pass from Julian Clavel to John Rexroad set up on a long pass from Clavel to Justin Myrtle and that's the difference. Though they failed to score an extra point, it didn't matter here tonight. The Timberwolves have won it, beating Middletown by a score of 18 to 14. I'm Lindy Peters from MendocinoTV.com. Hey, hey, hope you enjoyed the game as much as I did. What a game tonight. Congratulations to Coach Fortner and the Middletown Mustangs for putting up a real fight here tonight. And congratulations to Coach Roy Perkins and the Fort Bragg Timberwolves in the driver's seat now. They need a win next week against Willits, and there's a pretty good chance they'll have a home playoff game. How about that? The way the season started in Castlemont and the way the – team is walking off the field tonight. What a difference. I'm Lindy Peters from MendocinoTV.com. Hey, thanks for joining us for an exciting game. High school football at its best from Timberwolves Stadium. Good night, everybody.